the fight for women goes on. Residents of Outremont have shared their concern about the questioning of a woman's right to uh, access to an abortion. Has always led on this issue. That's why Canadians are so concerned about the increasing rhetoric that we're hearing both at home and abroad. Could this House please get an update on the work that our government is doing to support the rights of women and girls around the world? Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Lindsay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we know when women and girls are healthy and empowered, everyone benefits. That's why we made a historic investment of $1.4 billion a year for women and girls' health at the Women Deliver Conference. $700 million will go specifically towards sexual and reprodu reproductive health rights to fill the gap that was left by the previous Conservative government and will empower 18 million women and girls by 2030, Mr. Speaker. With this, Mr. Speaker, we will be at the forefront of international efforts to improve the health of women and girls and also stand firmly in support of women's right to choose here at I imagine that you would find unanimous consent for the fo following motion that the House of Commons reiterate that a woman's body belongs to her and to her alone and recognize her right to choose an abortion regardless of the reason. So, um, two things I want to point out there. Mm -hmm. $1.4 billion per year mm -hmm. is the pledge. Uh, $700 million going towards abortion. Yeah. When they say reproductive rights, that's what they're saying, abortion. Mm -hmm. But also the backdrop to that standing ovation, you know, I was so impacted by that because this was not just about abortion. This was actually specifically about women having access to third trimester abortion. Mm -hmm. um, for any reason, mm -hmm. you know, n no medical risk to the mother, no medical risk to the mm -hmm. baby, just full on access at taxpayer expense because uh, the lead up to that motion was a bunch of media frenzy coming out of Quebec about women not having access to third trimester abortion mm -hmm. at taxpayer expense in Quebec. I don't know if a lot of people catch that, mm -hmm. that this is about third trimester abortion mm -hmm. for no reason. And that's, that's what our leaders were standing to applaud. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if they they knew mm -hmm. what exactly they, what they were applauding. Um, Andre, yeah. what do you say about this? This is a, a great example of how out of touch most of our elected leaders are with the international world, but also even with Canadians uh, here at home. Um, that, that clip, and we sat here and we watched for uh, almost a minute how long they stood there cheering and clapping. The speaker had to call them to order a few it times. It went on for about another minute it, after. Exactly. Yeah. It goes on for a long time. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head. We have to remember exactly what it is that they're, stand, they're applauding and they're shouting bravo and, and all of this kind of stuff. They're celebrating um, the so-called right for women to have unfettered access to abortion at any stage of the pregnancy, so right up to 40 weeks, uh, and for any reason whatsoever. Now, one of the reasons this really hits me personally mm -hmm. is that my babies were born at 37 mm -hmm. and 38 weeks. Wow. So we were talking about kids the same age as my children. Yeah. And uh, also, I know that there are people all across Canada that are mm -hmm. waiting to adopt fully formed mm -hmm. newborn babies. So we're talking about dismembering in the womb a fully formed viable child. Yeah. Yeah, so, so no other country in the world has no law like Canada does, so that's the first point. We stand alone in this, in this globe with having no legal uh, restrictions whatsoever. I mean, and most, a lot of Canadians don't they, know that. Well, that's true, and that's why I think our parliament is so out of touch with 
everyday Canadians. If you asked everyday Canadians when should there be a law, uh, the vast majority of Canadians would say, well, it should be after the first trimester. If we're going to have a law, we should have one after the first trimester. So, so the, the, the Parliament is way out of touch with the vast majority of Canadians. They can't fathom this kind of thing. Um, and yet they stand there uh, celebrating. It's, it is personal uh, for me and my family as well that um, we've uh, welcomed a child into our home uh, 20 months ago and she was uh, in a situation which was the epitome of what people use to justify abortion. Her mom was living on the streets, mm -hmm. uh, impoverished and so on, but her mom knew that her child deserved a chance and so she chose life for her child. She tried to make it, she couldn't, she was unfortunately unable to, but then she did the most loving thing possible for her daughter and she, she gave her and entrusted her to my family. Mm -hmm. And so we are so uh, blessed by this little girl being in our in our family and 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 I think she is also blessed because she's been given that chance um, this is this is real like these are real little girls and real little boys that we're talking about here mm -hmm. and and our parliament is celebrating we we've got to make this a political issue yeah and unfortunately in that moment they were making it a partisan issue because yeah. they're saying like look at us the mm -hmm. liberals those of us on the left we are going to support a woman's right mm -hmm. and the conservatives remained seated I think because they were catching the gravity of what was happening here number one they were kind of protesting the fact that this was mm -hmm. being made a partisan issue right. but number two um, I think some of them were really connecting with the fact that we're talking about a third trimester fully mm -hmm. formed child you know abortion for any reason mm -hmm. so we need to be talking about this mm -hmm. obviously and 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 the other issues. So we're going towards an election here. Yeah. Uh, our, one of the things that your organization does with ARPA Canada is equips people on how to speak to our leaders. You are a professional dialoguer <laughs> with our leaders. So yeah. as candidates are knocking on the door, how would you encourage mm -hmm. Canadians to be speaking to our leaders about these yeah types of issues well you don't have to know that you know the pro-life apologetic through and through in order to be uh, informed enough and equipped enough to engage a, a candidate so just start with some basic questions and start on the outside don't go necessarily for the heart of the matter so ask your candidate do they support uh, something that happens in Canada is incur as is currently legal in Canada and that is sex selective abortion killing a little baby girl simply because she's a girl do you support that ask the candidate to to commit to an answer on that and say no I don't support it say what are you gonna do about it as a, as a elected member of, of parliament mm -hmm. uh, start there talk about third trimester abortion say we surely in Canadian society with all the medical advances we've we've come up with in the last uh, decade or, or five decades we surely can do better than abortion in the third trimester. I mean, the child has to come out anyway, so we're delivering the child anyway. Why do we have to kill the child first? Can we not uh, ban third trimester or late term abortions? Would you not agree with me on that? And, and I think the public is on our side on this one. Uh, I think a lot of politicians are just uh, too afraid to even touch the issue, so they don't at all. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to encourage them as Christians, say, okay, look, you don't need to know everything about this issue, but let's start somewhere. Why not start on the, on the outer uh, fringes of this debate and work our way in? Um, and I think it's completely reasonable, whether you're a Christian or not in Canada, most Canadians are appalled by the fact that we have no law, so let's engage with this debate in that way, and let's make a let's make a difference there. What about the freedom issues, uh, the parent the parental rights issues? How do we dialogue with our leaders on that stuff? Mm. Yeah, that's that one. Also, I think uh, we should relate to uh, politicians' own uh, lived experience. Most politicians, I think, are parents, or certainly they would remember their own parental upbringing as children. Um, you know, we I would I would take the angle of trust that we should be able to trust. Uh, parents in this country to raise their children the best way they know how and I, I trust Canadian parents generally speaking they're they're gonna do what they really do believe is best for their kids I'm not gonna agree with the way they parent their kids uh, in every situation but but we have to have that level of trust and ask a politician how much do you trust Canadian parents to raise their own kids hmm. um, and uh, and absent you know criminal neglect or criminal abuse the state shouldn't be interfering in that kind of a relationship. It's too, it's too special, it's too sacred for the state to be involved. Well, well put. So your organization uh, also has an affiliate organization, mm -hmm. We Need a Law, and I know you guys are putting out resources mm -hmm. uh, for Canadians. Where can people find you? Yeah, so arpacanada.ca, uh, the website, we're on uh, social media as well, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, and our affiliate, the same thing, we need a law.ca on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, so definitely check us out. We have talking points on the website for uh, how to talk to your politicians during uh, the election cycle about these issues. Amazing. Thank you so much for all the resources you provide for everything you do and for being with me today, Andre. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me.